Hey guys, I wanted to do a brief video today about the 22RE EGR and air injection systems and block off kits like this that you can buy on the internet. Uh, why would you do it and what is it? And uh, there's all sorts of wild claims on what they do and why to do it. So I want to share some details what I found out. So right now my engine is in a good state to talk about this. Uh, everything's kind of clean and dry assembled right now so I can take apart several things to show you where the passages are and what exactly is going on. So the first mistake I see a lot is uh, when people are talking about EGR deleting, um, they're talking, they talk about this pipe here and this passage back here and they do sell block off plates for this. However, that is not the EGR system. It has nothing to do with EGR. That is actually air injection. So air is going into the exhaust system through these ports here. So where exactly is the EGR? Okay, so I removed the headers and we can see here's the exhaust ports. Um, if you take a look here, there's no passage up here into the block, but there's these holes right here. And then over on this second pair, there's another hole right there. Okay, that is the EGR passage. If we take a look at the headers, that port lines up with this little channel right here. So the exhaust from the number two cylinder vents through that little channel. And then the same thing is going on on the number three cylinder. And so that corresponds, here's the one number two cylinder, that little slot, that channel vents exhaust gases into that hole. And then here's the number three cylinder and that vents exhaust gases into that hole. The two are a channel. There's a, a channel behind here. It runs all the way across, picks up number three, and it runs all the way to the back of the head. We come out of the back of the head into this black thing here. Okay, this is called the EGR cooler plate. So let's take a look under there. Okay, so here's the exit hole for the exhaust gases and they just come right out of the back of the head. Alright, then this cavity here, this is part of the water jacket. So that hot water from the head is coming back here. So here's the inside of the plate and you can see the plate has a channel where the exhaust gases go, keeps it separate from the water jacket. So effectively this is trying to bring the exhaust gases down in temperature because the water is cooler than the exhaust gases. Okay, then those cooler hot those cooler exhaust gases are going to re-enter the head right here. And then that is going to come out over here. So this here is the, the EGR valve. So what happens here is this is basically the on-off switch. This is a vacuum controlled diaphragm and there's a little plunger in there and this is the on off switch for the whole system so depending on whether there's vacuum on this diaphragm or not that switches this on or off and if it's on if the valve is open then the exhaust gases are going to continue up here and go into this fitting here and into your intake manifold now, it doesn't just dump straight into the intake manifold in the back here. It actually travels all the way up to the front. It comes out right there. Now, what's missing here is the throttle body. So your throttle plate is actually right about here. So that means those exhaust gases came all the way up here just behind the throttle plate. And that's when they're where they're introduced back into the engine. Okay, so what is all this doing? There's a few other parts of the system that I didn't show you um, what controls that vacuum diaphragm. Uh, there's a, I think there's one or two vacuum controlled uh, or switches. Uh, myth number one, EGR is a performance robbing feature. It's not really because you're only going to feel your performance, your maximum performance when your foot's all the way on the gas and that's when it shuts it off. So it's not going to recycle exhaust gases and it's also not going to do it at idling. So one reason to delete it, um, 
is because it's going to reintroduce exhaust gases which may have a lot of oil smoke. If you have an older engine and you're passing a lot of oil through the rings, that oil is going out your exhaust system but it's also coming back through around your engine. Now when I took apart my engine, this was completely carboned up. I mean it was thick, uh, thick grunge of oil residue that had built up all inside the intake plenum. Um, all, the whole EGR valve was all clogged up with, with greasy soot. It was nasty stuff. So that's one legitimate reason why to delete that is because you want to keep the intake side of your engine a little bit cleaner uh, and not have to worry about all that grunge building up and causing other problems. So another reason people like to delete it is for cosmetics. There's the big vacuum uh, controlled uh, diaphragm back here. There's the EGR pipes itself. Um, there's several other vacuum hoses and a couple vacuum switches that sit on top of the rocker cover um, that if you're trying to clean up the engine bay and remove as many things as you can, uh, that's one system that you can delete. So one of the reasons not to delete the EGR system is something called pumping losses. So your engine is a four-stroke engine and one of the strokes the cylinder is pulling the air down into the engine and that's inefficient because it's doing work, it's dragging on the engine but for no power output. You're just pumping air into the engine. And so during that phase uh, some, it's working against a vacuum so it helps if uh, during certain engine conditions if there's a little bit of assistance in they can in, the EGR essentially injects dead air or or uh, inert air into the engine and it helps reduce that pumping loss and it helps the engine be a little bit more efficient so when you delete your EGR you're actually going to see worse gas mileage uh, and worse efficiency out of the engine so there's a valid reason for having it and that's probably one of the bigger reasons that it's on all cars today is for efficiency. There's also some emissions reasons for it. It does reduce nitrous oxides that come out of the tailpipe in certain conditions, which of course uh, is what all the, the smog people want. But the main benefit for you is uh, reduced pumping losses and greater efficiency. So this is a typical kit of what you get when you order an EGR delete kit. It's usually four different pieces. You've got these, which go on the exhaust manifold or over your headers, which, as I said, have nothing to do with EGR. These part are not actually an EGR delete. This is an uh, uh, air injection delete system, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And then this plate here, this is the plate to block off the EGR on the head. And then this plate here is to block off the, uh, where it actually injects into the manifold because of course if you remove that stuff you can't leave a big hole in your manifold. So really if you want to do EGR delete these are the only two pieces you need. So then what is all this stuff about air injection? So that's what I'll show you next here. So the air injection system actually starts on this side. So I'm going to show you from the beginning of the system and where that ends up. So underneath your lower intake manifold you'll see this device here. This, there's a tube here, there's a rubber hose that hooks up to a about a coconut size plastic resonator ball and that feeds off of your intake air system. So this is fresh air coming into the system. This part here is a reed valve. You can think of that as like a one-way valve. It's only going to open when air wants to flow that direction. And then this here is another vacuum diaphragm which serves as an on-off switch. When that diaphragm is on, the air is going to come around this pipe and it's going to come up to here and it's going to come to this unit here. And just in case you're wondering, no, I'm not going to leave this nasty, rusty looking thing on this beautiful engine. I'm going to actually build a new one, but that's another story. So this air comes into the number one and the number four cylinders and mixes with the exhaust gases and travels out. So this air injection system, what is it for? So uh, one of the things that happens in different load conditions uh, is there's a lot of 
unburnt hydrocarbons that are going down the tailpipe. Um, and most people have a catalytic converter down farther and the job of the catalytic converter is to stay really hot and burn all those unburnt hydrocarbons and reduce tailpipe emissions, of course. Uh, but one of the problems is there, it's oxygen starved. All this dead air is coming out here. There's unburnt hydrocarbons, but there's not enough oxygen left to burn it. So the air injection system simply injects some fresh, some fresh air under certain conditions so that when it gets down to the catalytic converter, there's some oxygen there so that it can burn. Now, when is this used? This only comes on under certain conditions such as idle and such as over 2500 RPM. It's up to the computer again to uh, turn that on or off, but it has zero effect on performance. It does nothing to take away any power, to add any power. You can delete that if you want. If you want to remove this kind of stuff, remove some vacuum switch valve, remove that other unit, the, the actual uh, read relay unit on the other side and the resonator and all the stuff that goes with it. If you want to clean up your engine bay, that's fine, but it doesn't change your performance at all. It's purely a cosmetic delete. Now, of course, I'm keeping all this stuff because I'm in California and I'm not going to pass a smog test if I delete any of that stuff. So if you're in a non-smog state or if you're off-road only, you can delete this stuff and make your engine as engine compartment as beautiful as you want, but I get to keep all this stuff, so we have to make it all work and we have to understand how it works if we want to uh, keep these things on the road. So that's it. I uh, hope that wasn't too much information, but I see a lot of misinformation on how the EGR and air injection systems work and what they do and when to remove them and when not to, uh, but uh, I hope that uh, answers some questions out there. Thanks for watching.